Hello, welcome back to Pure Science Education. As we know, all Year 11s are going through their mock exams at this point, which are really important for their final grades. So I'll bring for you a quick uh, mind map to revise topics for chemistry. Today we're looking at mind map, uh, mind map on atomic structure, which is topic one uh, for all um, triple combined higher and foundation students and this mind map summarizes the whole topic quite well so let's have a look at um this here um this little structure here is your periodic table um being made and what kind of things can be asked on periodic table so if we're going down um the column here this bit here is called groups so group and if I go across um, this bit here, then this bit is called a period. So what you need to know, depending on which group um, the elements are on, um, that's how many um, electrons they will have in the outer shell. So like, let's have a look at this. This is one, two, three four five six seven and eight and if i was to just pick on one of these groups so if i put pick on group one for example it has one electron in the outer shell um and it's the same for the other ones if you look at group four it has four electrons in the outer shell group five will have five and so on um and that's how we know how many electrons they have now equally if we was to look at the same periodic table and work out the ions um then you can say if it's in group one it has a plus one ion if it's group two it has plus two ion plus three minus three minus two minus one and zero so these are ions um again a really good thing you can do when you get your periodic table in your exam and this allows you to write formulas, work out lots of different things. So, um, ions, uh, the word ion means a charge um, atom, um, which means it could be a positive and negatively charged atom. And if it's a metal, it's positively charged because it's lost electron. And if it's a non-metal, it's gained electron. So, it's negatively charged. So, that's a very quick summary of how you can use a periodic table in your exam and moving on everything is made out of atom um and now let's have a look at um the definitions they they come up quite a lot so these three keywords here element compound and mixture are something that come up quite a lot in terms of definition so if i was to look at an element element is made out of one type of atom only if i was looking at compound is made out of two elements chemically bonded together and if you look at mixture is two or more um, elements they are physically um, mixed together but they're not chemically bonded together so they, they can be separated so like a mixture of air has got different gases you can then separate them um, however if you look at compound you can't separate them because they're chemically bonded so it's important that you understand the difference between element, compound and mixture. And if you look at your periodic table, um, it's made out of elements. But if you then pick two different elements on the periodic table, it becomes a compound. So that's uh, uh, how you can do the um, definitions. So if you then look at an, uh, something called atomic number and uh, mass number, that comes up quite a lot in the exam. So if I look at sodium, for example you have 23 and 11 so na is your symbol 23 is your mass number and 11 is your atomic number so what does that mean so atomic number is a number of protons which is equal to the number of electrons because they're exactly the same so if i have 11 protons i will also have 11 electrons but I do not have 11 neutrons. Mass number is made of number of protons plus number of neutrons. 
So if I was to add the two, it gives you the mass number. Now, if you was to work out the number of neutrons, then you will have to do mass number take away atomic number, which in this case will be 23 take away 11, which gives you 12. You, um, and there is a reason why um, number of protons are not equal, no, number of um, neutrons, because number of neutrons are different. And if you have different number of neutrons, you form something called isotopes. So isotopes are where you have the same number of protons and electrons, but you have different number of neutrons. So you can get chlorine 35 and you can get chlorine 37, for example. Um, another term that comes up quite a lot in the exam and people, um, students get really confused and they don't understand what they're asking, even though they know the answer. They use quite a lot of times, they use the word um atomic subatomic particles in the exam this one here and um it's not a common word that gets taught so subatomic particle refers to neutron proton and electron um and they can ask you what charges these subatomic particles have or what masses is a really typical exam question so the clues here is n no charge p positive charge E, negative charge. So you can see easy way of learning. Mass is 1, mass of plus 1, and mass of 1 over 18 hundredth of a proton, or you may see 1 over 2,000 as well. Right, so that was um, the subatomic particle charges and masses. And finally, a um, couple of few more things. Um, again, a typical exam question, label the structure of an atom. So this is a structure of an atom on the board or the uh, model. So we have in the shell, which is negatively charged, are your electrons. In the middle, I've got P, uh, positive of protons. Uh, the other one is neutrons in the middle. If I put my protons and neutrons together, it makes a nucleus. And electrons are orbiting on the shell or orbit. Um, if you then look at here, it says magnesium oxide is made of. So you need to know it's two things here. It's made out of magnesium and oxygen atoms so you must know the two elements there um, and finally looking at a, a very um, um, popular exam question here electronic configuration so first shell has maximum of two electrons second shell has eight third has eight and in theory, the fourth can have 18, but before GCSEs, uh, because you only need to know the first 20 elements, which is hydrogen um, to calcium, this 2AA2 rule works really well. Um, so what does that mean? So first shell is this one in a shell here, so the maximum of two. Because two is full, and as I said to you originally, uh, sodium had 11 electrons, the first two are full. So next one, I can do eight. Now make sure in the exam you draw them on the shell, not outside. And you draw them in pair, you can't go wrong. So so far I've done two and an eight. I still got one more left because my second shell is now four. So I use my final shell, which is um, third shell and electronic configuration for sodium is 281, which equals to 11. Um, another way of figuring um, how many shells you will need is depending on which period your element ends up in, is that how many shells you um, get um, when you're drawing electronic configuration. Now, a really busy mind map with lots of different information um, summed up quite quickly. Um, and everything on this mind map I have summed up are lots of important really really common exam questions that you tend to see quite a lot. Uh, I wish you all the best with your assessments and hope to see you soon.